Hello, everybody. Be welcome. Uh, this is uh, uh, Vitor Pordeus from Brazil, from Rio de Janeiro, uh, bringing uh, the first uh, communication after four years of clinical practice and clinical theatrical practice of this organization that I have founded here in Rio de Janeiro called uh, Dionysus Theater Clinic which is a continuation of the Madness Hotel. It is a continuation of the Dionysus Theater that were uh, cultural movements and organizations that were started inside the oldest asylum of Brazilian psychiatry where uh, Dr. Nise da Silveira worked and developed a pioneering uh, experience in, in Jungian psychiatry and mental health promotion through culture. So this is the, the art and healing course of the summer school of the Division of Social and Transcultural Psychiatry of the McGill University, Montreal, Canada, and I'm speaking from Rio de Janeiro. Well, the first author and the first reflection I would like to bring to our course today is the founding father of medicine, Hippocrates of Kos. Uh, he was born in the island of Kos, and uh, he was the first scientific physician, the first science as physician who who was defending a scientific practice of medicine, that uh, was defending that medicine should be uh, performed in a verifiable way, in a reproducible way, through easy uh, advices and easy understanding and uh, 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 easy tasks to execute. So uh, Hippocrates was one of the first physicians and, and who wrote many texts and left us a whole library, a whole library of treaties of medicine, on madness, on epidemics, on the weather, on the influence of the weather in the, in the mental health. And, and, and all that was pioneered by this, this Greek school of medicine, which mean, means uh, Hippocratic medicine. And most importantly, uh, as, as a clinician and as a physician and as a person who works uh, uh, with healing and, 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 and health, and I'm always uh, working with people and I'm always working with groups and working with communities, I want to call attention to the fact that we, ha we do have a scientific system in medicine. And this scientific system, in, in the case that I'm bringing, it's very old. It's, it, it, it has been used uh, for centuries and millennia that uh, physicians all around the world and also health professionals and also in other traditions, you can see that in the Africans, in the Asians, in the indigenous people from the Americas, this tradition of cultivating memory, of joining memory, which is in Greek, med in Western medicine, we call it anamnesis, which is the joining memories of, of the clients, of the history, of the people, of the, of the community, of the culture. This anamnesis, which is a careful clinical history that you can uh, collect from the patient, from the family, from the community, from the city, from the country, from the, the species, from the living systems, it is a, 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 a way to reach a, a synthesis that is called diagnosis, né? which is the knowledge that you can accumulate about someone, about a disease or a sick person, and this synthesis explains what that person is suffering and this uh, diagnosis, when it's well done, it connects with the prediction of what will happen to that disease. If it is treated, if it is not treated, how it is treated through the therapeutics. So this is a continuum system that what is happening today is that we are leaving the anamnesis behind, we are leaving memories behind. And this looks like colonization and neocolonization and uh, colonizatory psychosis, colonizatory neurosis and competition and uh, 
all kinds of very dangerous, uh, sick uh, uh, mental states that are ruling our society right now. And also the memory of the people and the memory of the community and the memory of, of, the, of, the, of the person who is suffering from a disease is the key element in medicine and it's what distinguishes medicine from other professions. And I think this is what we are missing. I wrote a paper in 2018, my last year in Montreal, about Hippocrates being betrayed, attributing classifications to patients instead of investigating their histories. And this is so serious and so pervasive and so universal in our current moment in medicine and in the health systems that I want to bring in Ivan Illich, which was a philosopher who worked in Mexico, in Cuernavaca, where I also worked in 2017, that is called Medical Nemesis, the medical disgrace, the, me the complete medical disgrace, the total apocalypse of medicine, which is basically this problem that I'm bringing uh, everywhere in the art and healing profession is that, that the problem in the... Uh, in, the, in the psychiatry, that is the problem. In, med, in, in family physicians, that is the problem. Which is without a clear commitment to memory, to anamnesis of people, communities, and living beings, we are under threat of coloni colonizatory psychosis and neurosis that can be seen in all kinds of symptoms, wars, holocausts, uh, social convulsions, uh, economic crisis and all kind of unconscious collective behaviors, we are under the, the operation of these uh, sick forces, but psycho psychopathological forces. No, and with that, with with no attention to memory, there is no serious clinical follow up. Without a serial a serious cl serious clinical follow up no resolution of severe illness, no resolution of chronic diseases, neither prevention of vi vicious cultural habits. So, disease is ruling, death is ruling in most of the human minds. And that's exactly the idea that brought Freud to develop his whole work, uh, which is this idea of a psychopathology of daily life, a psychopathology of self-sabotage, sab sabotage. A psychopathology of where you have no enemies. You are your only enemy and you sabotate yourself and you contradict yourself and you destroy your own creation. So Freud keeps being the Pope. He still is the Pope. The Pope is Freud because he opened the gates to investigate those sexual neuroses and this competition and this crazy mode of living. You know, the, 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 the psychopathology of daily life, the, the culture and its discontents, and all this work on, on, on sexual uh, harassment and sexual assaults as sources of traumas, we still owe a lot to Freud. So in a diagnostic way, I bring Hippocrates and Freud to make you think about the lack of memories in our practice, the lack of memories of our own families, the lack of memories of our own medicines, and the, the lack of medicine in, in this world that is convulsion, in convulsion in the middle of a, a, a world crisis of mental health that is uh, accelerated by technological revolutions, the internet, and all that where we are working right now. So here in Rio, if we need to speak about theater, if we need to speak about embodiment, about music, and about what is a transcultural psychiatry that work in the community, that works with people, that works with patients, that treat patients, we started this project, which is the Dionysus Theater Clinic, and it is funded 100% by the community of Rio. I'm happy to say that I'm, I'm a blessed physician to work with my own community and my own patients, and I live exclusively from, from this activity, which is very challenging, very consuming. But when we started it in 2018, in August 2018, in the community of Mayer, where we had a landed house to start the project, I could form groups and we studied the main authors in the history of transcultural psychiatry and the arts, 
who the founding father is Hans Prinzhorn, that started the first collection of uh, patients with severe mental illness, with schizophrenia, and he was also an, an artist and a singer and a musician and an art critic. Likewise, the first Brazilian pioneer, Osório Taumaturgo Cesar, who uh, was a teacher of Nise, and he started the first museum of patients in São Paulo, in the Franco da Rocha, Juqueri uh, Asylum. Or also Dr. Eric Cunningham Dax, who started the Adamson Collection uh, of, of, of uh, outsider art, which is in the Welcome Library in London today. And he also moved to Australia, where he was a, a mental health secretary, and he uh, developed a whole museum, which is up, up to now active, called the Dax Center in, 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 in Melbourne, in, in, in Australia. Of course, we talk a lot and we work a lot where this psychiatrist, this transcultural psychiatrist this woman, Nise da Silveira, she emerged from our own community. She emerged from the, suburb, the suburbs of Rio de Janeiro. She, she emerged from the periphery of Rio de Janeiro, where I was born. So uh, also John Wire Perry, who was the, one of the most prominent Jungians from United States, and he was a professor of psychiatry in uh, UCSF in California, and he developed the most uh, 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 wonderful work in, in, in acute psychosis, un using the Jungian framework and the idea of ritual dramas of renewal. Dr. Lula Vanderlei was a student of Nise da Silveira, and he is a continuator of the Brazilian artist Ligia Clark, in the psychiatric clinic. He was a personal professor of mine here. He is a, a personal professor of mine here in Rio. Uh, Dr. Jacques Arpin, who is a pioneer in the theater, performance, and psychiatry in, in Geneva, in Switzerland. He's still alive and they are still active. Lula and Jacques Arpin. And also, very important, that at the time when I gave the course the first day, uh, Fred was alive and Fred Hickling, who is a revolutionary psychiatrist from Jamaica, who developed a whole life work uh, to theater performance, public occupations, theater inside the hospitals, theater inside the schools, and music and dancing and drumming and circling, and psychohistoriography and cultural therapy, which are our references. So as, as we are doing science, we learned that we have uh, ancestors, scientists that have preceded us before in the realm of cultural psychiatry. Here I bring in Jung and Nise da Silveira together and also Jason Guzder as an artist and cultural psychiatrist, as a therapist, as a psychotherapist, a community psychotherapist, a cultural psychotherapist that is also a very important pioneer in our uh, school for art and mental health. And, and this is a moment to make a homage, to pay a homage to the ancestors and the people that came before us and performed exemplary work that will help us to uh, advance our challenges. In the theater work, I have been working with the same authors and with the same workshops and we also performed that in the implementation of the theater clinic in Rio. And these, these authors are William Shakespeare, Bertolt Brecht, Amir Haddad, who was my professor of theater here in Rio, from the Tanahua group, Antonin Artaud, Euripides from Greece, uh, Baruch Spinoza, and Nise da Silveira as dramaturgy. We, we play her in, in a play, and that's how we started the, the Madness Hotel. So we have been performing theater all the time and we have been seeing patients all the time. Also, we did a group uh, works in schools and we did occupation of schools with a study group, group on Nise da Silveira and Paulo Freire, as here you, you can see. So, and we have been doing uh, online meetings with Jasmine and giving uh, public talks on art and, and the mental health and lectures on, on the Nise da Silveira methodology, on Jungian methodology, and all is working. We also have the, the, 
very important uh, influence of Vera Dantas, who is a physician and, and actress and seno poet and popular educator and educator uh, from Ceará in Brazil. She's a, a co-founder of the Madness Hotel. She had been working uh, with us and I had been working with her in, in all those last 13 years and she's a major reference in Brazil for health promotion and medicine. We did lives with uh, Brazilian masters like Vera Dantas and Lula Vanderlei, many lives and many uh, interviewings. I also did an interview with uh, Debbie Ann Chambers from Jamaica, who is a continuator of Fred Hickling, and she manages beautifully the psychotherapy and the poetry, the science and the art, and that's what we do. We have two heads, one head for the arts and another head for the science. And in transcultural psychiatry, you need to be connected to the, both fields, the fields of doing and the fields of thinking, the field of science and the field of the arts. And also I did a live, a special live with a simultaneous translation into Portuguese with Jesuit another time and, and from Sao Paulo, with a big Sao Paulo organization, the SESC from Sao Paulo. We, I participated in the special uh, global he mental health conference in, of Jamaica, uh, uh, unpacking colonial trauma, negating the negation of black power with Dr. Alta Stewart and, and, and Dixon Chibanda and Jeffrey Walcott and, and Nimek Richards and uh, all the group from FRED that uh, is still uh, resonating in our hearts and that we have to celebrate him and we have to celebrate his memory and we have to celebrate his clinical work and we have to ce celebrate his community cultural theatrical work in a, as a way to, to health promotion. In the last four years, we, I have been seeing, my team, we have been seeing more than 4,000 uh, people, more than 4,000 patients have hired us uh, in, uh, to, to make consultations and follow-ups. Our emphasis had been on anamnesis, on joining memories, and the, making the follow-up of, of, of the cases, how they are progressing and how they progressed with the, with the work. And also the emphasis not only in an individual anamnesis, but also to collective anamnesis and transgenerational anamnesis and anthropological anamnesis where you can bring more cultural dimensions, rituals, ritual, ritual patterns of the family, the issue of uh, ritual inversions and colonization that we are facing very hard and we are seeing it very hard in our psychopathology of the colonization. Uh, online consultations and online follow-ups increased a lot with the pandemics, uh, uh, but we keep doing cons presential consultations and presential follow-ups. Residential visits, I had been seeing a lot of patients in their houses with the families and doing interviews with families, with old relatives, and it works a lot in order to get more information and reach a clearer diagnosis. And also with the follow-up, you can uh, confirm or change the diagnosis accordingly with the changes of the patients and the evolution of the patient. This is crucial. This is a basic issue in medicine. Nobody's doing it. All the patients come to me and say, nobody did my anamnesis. I say, yes, the, the, we are drug, drugging too much and asking too much exams. And also, all this period we have been doing clinical supervision meetings weekly, every Monday night, uh, two online uh, regular courses uh, in the last two years, one on psychopathology, on epigenetic psychopathology, and the other on immunology with Nelson Vaz, who is, who is one of the most prominent immunologists of Brazil, that was also one of my supervisors in the my early years when I was an immunologist. And immunology seems to be each time more important uh, with all these uh, vaccines and pandemics that we are facing. We, I, in the last two years, I have been working in my full capacity I have, and I have a waiting list. So the theater clinic is a success and we have been accumulating positive results in the last four years. And that's a 100% privately funded by the, the community with neg negotiated consultation fees 
and this is a very important issue since we face a, colon a colonization, we face a colon colonized society, a colonized institutions, and uh, that's not reason for us not to practice mental health promotion in the community, in our own community. Uh, Rio de Janeiro is a megalopolis. We have 7 million uh, individuals and they are distributed in many different communities and, and cities and surrounding cities. And I have been seeing people from more than 24 different communities, which makes a, a meta community that I have been working as a collective unconscious manifestation, as a collective unconscious reading. And that's why I think Dr. Nise and Dr. Jung are very, very much important for family medicine, for community medicine, for community psychiatry, because they offer us, offer us collective reading tools for reading the architects. We'll talk more about this. Well, in the clinical perspective, we have been facing all kinds of very severe diagnosis from feminicide, appendicitis. Uh, I have one case of tuberous sclerosis, which is a rare genetic disease. A few cases of uh, severe autism, a few cases of child abuse, uh, one case of first episode psychosis, uh, and one case of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So the clinical uh, uh, demand is very high. We are seeing all kinds of very severe diseases and this, the clinical skills are needed more than ever. And the, the clinicians should be in the community, working in the community. We can do a lot more when we are inside the community, being able to prevent uh, severe events, being able to medicate people before they get into crisis, me being able to uh, give antibiotics to people before they get into a, a pneumonia, and also COVID, of course. You know, I've been working a lot with COVID cases and doing a lot of work in, to, to, to uh, reestablish the immune system of people. In the, in the psychiatric issue, and, and as we have a Jungian reading, we read the clinical manifestations of the patient through the Jungian method, we identified a lot of key archetypes that appear almost in everybody. The first one is fetish for money, which is, uh, uh, in a symbolic fashion, uh, we can evoke the demon Mammon from the Old Testament, the, the devil of greed. And also another play that works with that very well is Faust by Goethe, especially in part two, scene one, where the devil invents money. And there's a whole discussion about the fetishization of money and how that is powerful and pervasive and it affects almost everybody's mind. And that's an analytical theme. 100 patients of 100 percent of the patients and the therapists and everybody should discuss fetish for money and how they deal with money and if money is being treated in a balanced way. Another key archetype is the sex wars, Marduk Tiamat syndrome, the war between masculine and feminine gods. This is still erupting and working very hard in this moment of polarization where you have the war of the masculine against the feminine and everybody seems to be each time more committed to the violence and to attacking each other. Uh, also ritualized child abuse, the ritual inversions of the, of the colonization, and also uh, many, many uh, situations where you see and we can see that child abuse and sexual abuse is a tradition. It's been repeated all over, everywhere, and we have to debate it in a collective manner. Otherwise, it won't happen, any change. And also the issue of organized crime, paramilitary militias attacking families and communities in Rio. And then we can bring the villains of, of Shakespeare and the uh, Macbeth, that he kills the whole family to become king. Richard III, he killed all the whole family to become king. In Hamlet, the brother of his of the fa of father of Hamlet is killed in order to become king. So this is all all very useful for us to reflect and create parallels, clinical and archetypal parallels 
in order we can create dialogues and therapeutic strategies uh, to resolve uh, the psychiatric issues we are finding in individuals and groups. And also the issue of egocentrism, vampirism, hysteria, ego formation, and the whole school of Freud, Jung, and Perry, the American Jungian, uh, are needed here. And we also identify the whole general theme that we put above all the others, which is the pedagogy for autonomy and the pedagogy for dependency. We will see that we are sick of pedagogy for dependency everywhere, in every institution, in every group. And this is a very important challenge that Paulo Freire had been showing. We see the patients and we do uh, initial psychotherapeutic uh, processes and we medicate people and we give, we give cannabis oil to a large group of people too. And, and we evaluate, and then we start the theatrical processes. And the patients and the clients and the collaborating partners, they are invited to join the theatrical pattern. And then we start a process of building up a spectacle, a play, and then we can have a more a detailed evaluation of each one of us and meet together, because I'm participating as an actor. So we can see and evaluate the performance of people which is related to the clinical evolution, the psychiatric clinical evolution, the unconscious, the indirect unconscious clinical evolution, which is the presence, the engagement, the singing, the dancing, the gesture and the gestures, which is the archetypal charged gestures that actors and, and, and performing uh, people show contribution in collective activities, if the person observes the collective activity and contributes to the collective, and the playing and, of, and, and interpretation of characters, of heroes, of villains, and, and declamation of poetry, and, and the general state of the person, and documented reports and statements. And we generate a scale from 1 to 10, and then we can plot the clinical evolution and the clinical theatrical evolution that actually walks together in a plot. And you can see that through this uh, mode of evaluation, we found a clearly positive um, uh, performance change, performance engagement and development in, in, the, in the four years follow-up follow in almost 20% of the, of the people who got engaged and hired us and participated in the workshops and played. And one out of five engaged in significant performance changes in our plays. And we used the playing as a way to uh, uh, probe the unconscious. We work with the theater as a way to probe the unconscious, as a way to look inside the people's head if you want to see what is inside a person's head, you see what she's doing in the action realm, in the performance. The performance is actually uh, informed by the unconscious realm. And we, in the four years, played eight uh, big spectacles, and we started a carnival parade too, uh, uh, which is, was Lila by Goethe, Hamlet by Shakespeare, Hamlet by Shakespeare, uh, in another play, in another community, in another uh, part of the territory, Macbeth, the Bacca, the imaginary Invalide, which is a play by the French Moliere, the French Shakespeare Moliere, Hamlet by Shakespeare again, and the last play was Life of Galileo. And we believe that the images are, uh, uh, they are, uh, so we understand that images are psychic documents and we have been producing a lot of images in the realm of the images with the uh, actors and the people like Reginaldo Terra, he kept playing and, and playing music and dancing and the improvisation and the evaluation of the images of the unconscious and also we have been playing different parts of the city, engaging all kinds of people and working with all kinds of mental states. And, 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 and Reginaldo Terro, who was 
uh, in the in the asylum for 58 years. He was hospitalized when he was 11 years old, and he got out of it with through theater. And he's an actor for 13 years. Pelezinho left out the homelessness. Tiago Beck started uh, his life as a clinical psychologist with us four years ago, and he's playing theater and doing drama therapy and doing uh, uh, clinical work uh, as, a, as, a, as a psychologist. And this is very uh, gratifying to see people um, different, to see people evolving, to see people creating things that they weren't creating before. And uh, we play in the streets, we play occupying uh, public spaces, and we use archetypal characters and archetypal plays in order to heal the unconscious of groups and to heal the unconscious of individuals. Psychotherapy, Jungian psychotherapy with theater. And, and we have been occupying the public library in the downtown of Rio. We occupied the central station of, of, of Rio de Janeiro. We occupied... Uh, we, uh, Pelezinho, né, which is this actor that works with me for 13 years, giving a class to medical students of the first year in the public library. So we have been doing uh, very clear work of, of rehabilitation, of psychic regeneration, of psychic healing through culture and through cultural action. And that's how we believe it should be done in order to advance the work of Nisa da Silveira, Paulo Freire, Fred Hirkling, Jason Gusder, in, and, and occupying the public spaces of the city. Rio de Janeiro is a city where public spaces are all abandoned and full of police. It's a very violent city with a, very, with a lot of robbery and, and killings. So uh, we understand that uh, through the occupation of public spaces, we are healing the public spaces and the communities and preventing the events of violence to happen. And that's how it should start, through culture and public occupation. In last in, two years ago, uh, three years ago, uh, I was invited to come to the Hamlet Castle in, in Elsinore, in Helsingor, in, in Denmark. And I was there and I met the ghost of the King Hamlet in the dungeons of the castle. And that, for me, was a big, big confirmation that Hamlet is truly with us and truly helping us to perform in this uh, scenario. And also Macbeth. It's another play of our repertoire, and we have been playing it uh, in Rio de Janeiro downtown in the public library, and uh, with a chorus of witches and chorus of witches and glorification of, of the feminine power and performances in the psychology school, performances in public spaces, in the first public square of Rio. So we had been doing very uh, re rewarding and gratifying work, uh, putting people to dance and putting people to occupy the theaters of their own communities and occupying the public spaces here. In the picture, you can see Louise Rosenberg, which is my collaborator, who is a community activist leadership in Montreal today. And she's not here online with us because she had a compromise and she uh, uh, told us. And we also played the Bacchae from the Euripides, a, a Greek play about Dionysius, occupying public spaces, working and training actors in the public spaces and doing occupation of the incredible spaces that we have in the city. And all those places are empty because people are afraid, because people are disconnected from their own communities. And then we uh, reoccupied uh, this uh, beach in Ipanema uh, with the Baca, uh, where children play, where everybody plays. There is no mysteries that are not accessible to everyone in this tradition. And dialoguing is the rule. We should dialogue. We are dialoguing. Dialoguing is the most important issue and the biggest challenge that, that we are facing. We also had this work during the pandemics in a more closed, uh, closed to the group, which was the Imaginary Invalid, the play from Moliere that was written in 1673 and we occupied a different park close here to my community 
and uh, we performed this very archetypal play about a, a neurotic hypochondriac and how he deals with medicine. It's a powerful play about medicine, about neurosis, about hypochondria. And finally, we had this greatest performance of Hamlet with Reginaldo Terra playing 13 years continuously since the asylum to the community with a large group of actors and participations of all different people and uh, pageants and occupation of the public spaces or the public squares. And Rafael Mannheimer had uh, this brilliant performance in the Hamlet role and we did incredible work and everybody uh, was very uh, stimulated by the performance of the actors of this archetypal play, Hamlet. Uh, King Claudius, Prince Hamlet, uh, Horatio, played by Tiago Beck, who uh, debuted as an actor and also as a therapist. Good players are good therapists and good therapists are good players. Uh, uh, Nando Rodriguez, who is uh, who played brilliantly Queen Gertrude's, and the playing of the shadow through the theater, the playing of the shadow in the public square, the playing of life itself in a daily life theater, in the in the theater that belongs to everyone, to the theater that is not uh, private and it's not you don't have to pay for it. You pay only after, after the show, and if you like it. If you don't like, you don't have to pay. And, and this is very rewarding because we are in Rio. We are in, in Rio de Janeiro. This is our culture. This is carnival. This is our uh, religious traditions. These are uh, African traditions, indigenous traditions. This is the working in the circle is the working in the in the community, in the public space, in, in public mental health. And I think this is a very important, very important images, very important psychic documents. And I want to call your attention that the policemen that are, are working in the public square are also watching the play and also they participate in the play. So this is incredible. And that's Hamlet, Hamlet himself. Hamlet is working with us. And uh, we have been occupying beautiful public spaces that indeed need cultural life, need creativity. Finally, we got to the last play, which is the life of Galileo, which tells the story of the, phys of the physicist, of the, of the physicist, the first physicist, Galileo, 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 Gal Galile Galileo, Galilei, Galileo, Galileo, Galilei, Galileo, and, and this was a very revelatory play where we had incredible shadows and characters with the Inquisition. Inquisition is a very powerful trauma, very powerful collective trauma. It's still alive. And we closed our uh, seasons of theater, of four years playing theaters, and we must reopen in next July. We also did the psychopathology epigenetic regularly every Wednesday. And we also do it every Tuesday, uh, immunology debate and immunology dialogue. And this is the resume of the story. You know? So we have the, the public spectacle, you have the clinical meetings, you have the consultation offices, you have the uh, home uh, drama therapy, you have psychiatry of the sport, you have the group, the, the, the association for cannabis oil and support to the patients that in Rio are using cannabis oil is a brilliant work and you also have the actors workshop and all this is being uh, worked as integrated spaces where people can uh, walk from here to there and be followed up we also got involved in this beautiful exhibition art exhibition art show about Nisa da Silveira where Reginaldo Terra had the opportunity to uh, visit the one of the most prestigious cultural centers here in Rio. So this, and there in the wall is written, madness, yet there is method in it, which is William Shakespeare in Hamlet. So madness, yet there is method in it. Nisa da Silveira, Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud, and Hippocrates. Uh, we have a very powerful son and very powerful 
forces of nature and that's how we are playing. We are playing in the favor of the forces of nature. And it's becoming increasingly clear that it's not hunger, neither microbes, nor even cancer, but man himself, the greatest danger to humankind. Because he can't defend himself from psychic epidemics, infinitely more devastating in their effects than the biggest natural catastrophes. Uh, Carl Jung, né, the modern man in the search of a soul. And we are still facing this very serious racist society with the psychopathology of slavery, psychopathology of colonization, where uh, we still need, we, have, we, we, we will need a lot of public mental health policies in order to, like Fred Hickling. We need Fred Hickling's work, Fred Hickling's work in Brazil, Fred Hickling's idea of decolonization of, of psychiatry. We need the work of art and healing in Brazil. We need the work of community of Jason Guzder. And she had been uh, communicating a lot with us and uh, offering a lot of, of work and examples to guide our uh, mental health uh, promotion policy. Community policy, now, which is a private policy. Because the government in Brazil is the opposite way. This was the last art and healing workshop that we were together. That happened in 2019, and it's an honor for us to be together up to now. And also my group of actors, collaborators in Montreal, uh, when we were, uh, was the last time I visited the city. Uh, we had this last uh, me global mental health conference, the colonizing, the, colon the colonizing Madness, which was the last time that we were together with uh, Fred Hicklin and Pat Newton and also Nicole and Sophie and jo Geoffrey Walcott and, and, and Paul and, 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 and Niemek and also Jason Guzda. And, and this is a homage to Fred Hickling. He, this is a homage to our teacher, to our professor, to our prof, and uh, how he resolved the issues that we are being challenged right now. And uh, we keep working and we keep working with people and we keep doing uh, stable work and stable associations that, like with the Reginaldo Terra, we had been working together for, for 13 years now. And, and that's, I thank to him and I thank to all of you for listening to this uh, lecture and I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Be welcome.